Welcome to my talk titled Telephonic Rabbit Holes. I do a series of talks and deliver them to various places, but this is my most recent and my most fun, so I thought it'd be good to go through it. So what is Telephonic Rabbit Holes all about? Well, it's about my most recent project of hacking payphones and using this hacked hardware and the network I've created to raise awareness of some really good causes. Let's begin. So where did the initial idea come from? Well, the idea came from looking at the old red phone boxes in my city, home city of Salisbury and noticing that they're slowly disappearing. They're being removed through lack of use. So if we were to acquire one or two, how would we repurpose them to encourage more people to use them? Well, every good rabbit hole starts with a YouTube search. And it wasn't long before I found these chaps. Now these guys, uh, I think they're based in Plymouth. They were using their telephone boxes in their local area as makeshift recording studios for their pirate radio station, which they broadcast over FM really interesting and it really got me thinking about fun and creative ways to use the phone boxes to repurpose them to encourage other people to use them in different ways now what i'm going to talk to you about uh, now is not really technically very exciting but from a social aspect i think it is and let me explain I first set myself some requirements, some markers to hit along the way. Uh, first off, it had to benefit the local community somehow. And I am a computer science teacher. And one of the topics I teach in class is the digital divide. It's uh, surprising just how many people do not have access to hardware, um, smartphones or computer hardware. And with all services going online, being pushed more and more online we are excluding a quite a large demographic so why don't we once we take control of these phone boxes and phone sets why don't we offer free calls and mailbox facilities to that group of people who do not have access to that range of hardware we want to encourage greater use as well so whilst it has a serious side to the project we want it also to be fun so we're looking at fun and creative ways. We can also uh, entice people in the box to use it more. But the main aim really is to save these boxes from extinction. If more people are using them, then they're not going to be removed. So it's really important to preserve these important and iconic pieces of high street furniture. So one question that I kept asking was, who is still using these phone boxes? There must be people out there still using them. And in a recent Guardian newspaper article from April 2022, there was a nice article about phone boxes and who uses them. And apparently there's still f over 5 million pay phone calls made every year. So that's quite a lot. That's a, su a surprising amount. So there is still a demand. There is still a need for public phone boxes out in the wild. So I rang BT. I have a few contacts in BT, so I got in touch and I asked them to provide more information about the phone boxes use as a whole across the country. They sent me a report and admittedly I didn't quite get all of it, but there were some snippets of information, really useful and insightful pieces of information there. And we can see from this basic graph that the main groups of people who use the payphones are, as predicted, the people who don't have access to mobile phones or internet. But there's also uh, groups who are um, vulnerable or, um, as, you, uh, as you can see there, it, it breaks it down into various subsections. So this is perfect if we're wanting to, this project to appeal to, to these groups, these groups of people. So I started coding and making a bit of a prototype. Basically, number one was just a, a wooden box with, with an old uh, Android device stuck to it. 
the operating system which is running the network is um, Android based. And the idea was if we can install it, get it installed on a on a, an old uh, tablet or an old phone, then other people will be able to install it and, and take over their, their local um, payphone box um, once it's been properly decommissioned by BT. And as you can see, uh, prototype two, I started to uh, improve my woodworking skills and prototype three, you can see it start to illuminate and starting to take a, a shape and become a bit more familiar in terms of how a phone box or phone booth should look. And these were networked around the house and around the garden. But it wasn't long before I actually needed an actual BT payphone to start taking apart and looking at integrating with it couldn't get one from anywhere from from a BT contact or their suppliers uh, but I did manage to find one on eBay and here it is from the 90s um, yeah these things are built like tanks they are so difficult to get into and I don't really understand how the vandals managed to do it make it look so easy but once in I was able to work out the um, mechanics of it all and just the way the payphones are made, um, I could talk for hours and hours and hours. I found this to be really interesting, actually. Just the, the locking mechanism alone um, is just incredible. Really, really well designed, these things. Loved it. Loved working with it. Loved taking it apart. And as you can see, I've integrated with it. So this, the, the picture you're seeing there is before keypad integration. So you're going to see the screen um, um, on uh prominent on the front but um, but with proper keypad integration that device then goes inside and it just looks like a proper proper BT payphone and there it is I built a booth again improving improving on my woodworking skills and we have booths for uh, 60s uh, sorry 70s 80s and 90s style so this is the 70s one nice nice brown in color um, and the reason why they're themed as um, per decade is because um, when you phone dial a disc, there is a dial a disc feature for those who know what dial a disc is. You might need to do a quick Google, but uh, um, dial a disc, uh, you can dial a number and the operator or the system will know what booth you're phoning from and play music according to that decade. So really quite, really quite clever. Uh, so what are the final features of the project? Well, um, options one to three are, have taken more serious side. So free phone calls, free mailbox facilities and free access, uh, direct dialing into um, particular helplines. Uh, four is uh, the AI operator. And there's a TED talk I did um, a couple of years ago on how that chatbot, how that personal assistant has evolved and how and where where that started. Uh, number five is Diodisc. Option six I'll come on to in a minute. And there's a few other fun features. And you can see option nine is Zoltar. OK, so dial nine, you can get your fortune told by by Zoltar. Zoltar, by the way, um, is the fortune telling machine from Big. So uh, the boy put his money in, made a wish, wish I was big, and he was big. And if you haven't seen the film, go and see it. Classic. Um, this is where my rabbit hole splits or forks. And uh, yeah, so I started building my, um, as you can see there, my, Z my Zoltar cabinet. So I've got a full size coin operated uh, Zoltar cabinet, um, which you can then not only put your coin in and get your uh, fortune told, you can actually ring it from the phone booth. Um, a couple of booths down as you can see there anyway I'm going off on a tangent let's go back to the project so option six then is uh, a nice feature where you can ring a random phone box anywhere in the country and whoever picks up the idea was you start a conversation with them but I needed numbers to do this so it was again another call to BT unfortunately BT wouldn't allow me those numbers they couldn't or weren't allowed to give me those numbers. So um, I set about asking friends and family to go out and start collecting them for me. So they were able to um, collect them, verify them and, and, and send them back to me. Um, and they, um, the number of numbers I was collecting started to, started to ramp up, which was really nice. 
But once you've got them all in your area, you can't really expand any further without additional help. So uh, I built a little app and a little app for anybody to download and go off and log, keep logging um, payphone numbers for me. And that is where it sort of took off and the number of numbers being collected was, was growing at a nice steady pace. It's obviously sparked somebody's interest because it wasn't long before the BBC came knocking. So the BBC came, did a bit of filming, interviews in the workshop um, and CBS as well, which was nice. They, they got in touch. They're interested in the project. And after this, then the, the, num the amount of sheer numbers um, that were being sent to me um, really ramped up now. And I've got thousands, thousands of verified payphone numbers, which is brilliant. But instead of dialing them individually, one by one to see who picks up. I did think about what would happen if we dialed them in larger groups or all at once across the whole country. Because I've got numbers that are covering um, the whole, basically the whole country up and down the country. What if we rang them all at once? Might be a bit fun, could do it for a joke, but we could have a more serious side to this. So if we are ringing ring in those phone boxes at particular times of day. So maybe there's a charity out there who knows that maybe uh, people are most vulnerable at a particular hour and a particular day of the year. Say the 1st of January at 11 a.m. We know that male suicides spike at that particular time. So let's ring all the phone boxes at 11 a.m. on the 1st of January. Whoever picks up, we can play a message of hope and reflection and just what we're all about. And let's just take good care of people around us because chances are a vulnerable person is not going to be the person who picks up, but somebody will. And if we can all just look out for one another, I think that's a, a really powerful message indeed. We could also use it as like an information service being able to tap into those most those really remote areas that don't have mobile phone coverage, don't have much internet, but they do have a payphone. And we can reach those particular areas in the country to inform them about anything, to warn them of something, but also just as an extra lifeline to be able to um, keep communities that feel a little isolated from the rest of the country keep them informed and included. And again, I think that's a really, really nice and important thing indeed. So there we have it, telephonic rabbit holes. I think there's two messages to take away from this talk. The first is if you're passing a phone box and it's ringing, answer it. You never know who will be on the other end. But another important message is that you don't have to reinvent. You don't have, in terms of technology, it's, it's, it's better to look at what's, what we already have and reuse. So rather than invent, we can reuse. And by looking at projects and hardware from different viewpoints or incorporating different people with a different skill set, I think it will be amazing what we could achieve with what we already have. Anyway, that's Telephonic Rabbit Holes, the story of my hacked payphone project. And thank you for listening.